experiences, knowledge, and financial resources. You may lose all or more of your investment, uh, your initial investment. Opinions, market data, and recommendations are subject to change at any time. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future events. And uh, first off for today, we'd like you to take some notes and uh, hold your questions if at all possible. Um, I, Melissa, I hope you don't mind, but if the question seems to be very relevant to the moment and that the context is gonna get lost, I'll definitely pop it over to you or I might even break in and say, hey, this person wants to know something. Is that okay with you? Sure, sounds good. Fantastic. So guys, Melissa Armo is with us from the Stock Swish. She's presenting her trade on the side of institutional money in gaps. She's the founder and owner of an international educational company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. And the method, method that she teaches uh, is she owns it and she created it, which is unique to the stock swish. And it's based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. She's also uh, the executive producer and creator of her own television show, which is titled Make a Million with Melissa. So Make a Million with Melissa is a what to do and how to do it television show on stock trading. She appears on TV as an expert stock market analyst discussing the market, stocks, news, and world events on Fox News, Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, and CBS News Corporation. So with that, I'd like to turn the screen over to Melissa, and um, she's going to bring us a really cool talk. So let me just bring you over to presenter. Yes, and take it away. Okay, great. Can you see the slide? I can see your slide. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thanks for hanging in there and got set up. So glad to be here with everyone. Speaking of the market, we are selling off as we speak. Uh, you have p the health professionals in Capitol Hill right now that are talking and they are scaring the market. So I've had a bearish bias on the market actually for uh, most of this month. I really called earlier in the month of September and I thought that this was gonna be a month that the market would sell off. So these are interesting times to trade. And I live in New York. This is a picture of New York from a long time ago. Happier times in New York City. It's been a, been a rough near, year for New York in 2020. And I think it's been a, a rough year for traders if you don't know what to do. If you do know what to do, it's been a fantastic year because we've had a lot of volatility in the market. We had the nice rally into the beginning of the year, sell off then that happened in March with COVID, the rally back, and now we made new highs a couple weeks ago, and now we are selling off again. So I think no matter what period of time we're in, I think it's important to have a set strategy to trade, and that's really what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna talk about my strategy, which is on gaps. I'm gonna go over some trades from the last couple of weeks, and I'm gonna talk about institutional money in gaps, which, which is what I look at and pinpoint in the morning. Now, the market rallied, not today, but the last two days, okay? And I know people bought. <clears throat> and that was really not a good idea in my mind. But people did it because people saw the rally. And in fact, again, if you day traded the market yesterday, you made money as a long. But the fact is that the gap up that happened in the market yesterday was not made with institutional money. So it was not a good placement to go long or for any follow through. And again, you can see that here today because we are reversing like 100% of the rally that we had just boom like that in one day today and in fact the day isn't even over so we've reversed it and it's only 110 less than three hours of the day to go but that's a long time left where the market could continue selling off today okay so it is very important to know which side to be on whether you want to be long whether you want to be short okay it's important to know because when you get in a trade, the only way you're going to make money is if you're in the right direction, okay? With the best money management in the world, you're not going to make money if you are in the wrong direction. So like, for example, today, if you're in the market long, it's selling off, you'd be down, okay? So let's talk about trading on the side of institutional money and specifically in gaps. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at melissaatthestockswoosh.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP or feel free to tweet me or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. 
And also, I think YouTube is the best place to follow me because I put videos, reviews, uh, and also you can always feel free to call me if you have questions, okay? So you can trade the US stock market from anywhere in the world. So that's a plus. And again, another plus is the fact that the market is been, has been volatile because that makes for good trading. So while the word volatility tends to scare long-term investors or, or maybe scare you if you have money in a 401k or retirement account, if you're an active trader, actually that's a plus. Again, you have to be in the right direction, but you have to be in the right direction no matter what you do when you trade, okay? Whether you do a swing trade, a day trade, an options trade, uh, the volatility that we're seeing even here right now, we started to see it. Started to see it in the last two weeks, actually. Last week we saw it. We saw it in the rally last Thursday, and then the market sold off hard on Friday. That was a good another example of volatility, okay? And now we're seeing it again today. Today we're seeing the reversal today, okay? So again, volatility is a good thing if you want to make active money in the market. So I think for, for right now, 2020, and going into this period, into the election year, into 2021, many things coming up. We're still in this COVID uh, crisis. I think it's a great time to succeed and profit. And again, you have to have a good strategy that pinpoints where to enter the trade, where to exit the trade, and in what direction. So it's been really, for me, a good year to trade the market. And this is a clip of the cues earlier from today. And I just wanna show you here, this is July. <clears throat> July, August, and then September, okay? So September 1st, we actually made new highs, and then we gapped up September 2nd, sold off, gapped down September 3rd. Now, I'm going to just explain to you very briefly here what is a gap. For those of you that don't know what a gap is, just very briefly, a gap is the difference between the close and the open, okay? So you have bullish gaps and you have bearish gaps. So what's this here? This again is the QQQs. We closed here one day, then we gapped up. So we opened higher at a higher price than we closed on this day. This was August 31st into September 1st, okay? Then we did it again. September 1st into September 2nd, we did another gap up, then we sold off, then we closed, then we gapped down. So we closed at four o'clock, opened at 9.30 at a lower price. Okay, this was on the, the third. Okay, that was a big sell-off day. So again, I'm looking for the gap. And I'm always looking in the pre-market. Now you can look at the post-market too. Gaps can happen at night, gaps can happen in the morning, okay? Costco reports, is Costco reporting tonight? Costco either reports tonight or tomorrow night, I forget. Costco reports one night this week, maybe it's tomorrow. That will gap, okay? That will have a gap that will create buying or selling in the after hours. Then I will rate it and determine if the following day and the trading day, I will go long or short it. And that's what I do. And in a nutshell, that's really what I do. But I figure it out all before the open, okay? And again, any questions, you can plop them in the room. But fall is a great time to trade because we have earnings season starts, the quarterly earnings season. There's four quarterly earnings seasons in the U.S. stock market. And what happens in earnings season, companies report their earnings, like Costco is coming out this week. Now, it doesn't always match up, though, with the fundamentals. So I don't look at those. Like, you could have bad fundamentals, and then the stock could make new highs or reverse. You could have great fundamentals, a great report, and the stock could sell off. So you can't always make a decision what to do based on the fundamentals. If that helps you, fine. But I don't make trading decisions based on that. I look at technical analysis, and it's technical analysis in the gap. But one of the reasons that fall is a great time to trade is because you have lots of earnings. It's a busy time. People want to get in stuff. Again, before the end of the year, it's usually a very uh, time where there's a lot of volume. People are back from the summer holidays and vacation. And so fall is really a good time to trade and make money before the end of the year. Now let's talk about the power of institutional money. So what do I mean by this? Institutional money is big money, big positions that come in to stocks or the market. Volume, move it, big, big moves, 
okay? It's momentum. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trading on momentum, okay? So the momentum right now today for the market is what? To the downside. So you'd be short today or you'd be in options that are put today to make money, okay? We shorted the QQQs as a day trade this morning right out of the gate and it worked. It was a nice trade. And again, you could be still in it if you want to be. But institutional money is usually made by what? Big positions by large traders, hedge funds, banks, big trading desks, okay? Not retail traders. And even a thousand retail traders wouldn't move a stock like Apple or the market in any set direction, okay? So this usually happens when? In the post-market and the pre-market. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at that specific period to make the trading decisions that I want to make on the given day. So I don't trade the pre-market and I don't trade the post-market, but I make my decisions then. And then I determine what I'm doing after the open, after 9.30. And I think, you know, having had the stock switch business now for, you know, about eight years or so, a lot of people that I've talked to that are trading, they tend to get very stressed out and they jump around from thing to thing to thing all over the place. If you want to be successful in this business, and I don't care if you're doing it part-time or full-time, you must have, one, a strategy that works, and two, you have to be good at it. And the only way to get good at any one strategy is to be focused on it, to master it. And that is something that I have done. Uh, early on in my career, I didn't know what I was doing either, like many, many people out there, and some of you may be here today feeling the same way. It took me about three years to create my system. I traded gaps, though, very early on, and it made a lot of money one day in a gap in one trade, and then I knew there was something to it. Of course, I didn't have my system at that point, but I was very determined then to figure it out and figure out gaps. And much of what, ta what is taught out there on gaps, on gap analysis, is actually false. It's not good. It's not good information. It's not reliable and consistent to trade based off of it. So I'm very focused on one strategy. It's the golden gap. And if you stay focused on one strategy, you will be a lot less stressed out. If you're jumping around from thing to thing to thing, you're going to make money, have losses, make money, have losses, kind of chase your tail all the way around. And that will stress you out. Okay. The focus has to be there because you will have days that are easy, but you also will have tricky days tricky 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 days okay and you have to hold the conviction i call it conviction like i called puts in tesla um a couple of days ago and guess what they're working like crazy today but they took a couple of days to go so the trade was down before it went up okay it was an options trade so if you don't have conviction you're going to get very stressed out you have to know what to do you have to have conviction and you have to hold that conviction okay but trading can be very easy when you know what to do. I've called this market actually uh, uh, very well in the last few weeks. And, you know, you have to look at something and say, you know what? I believe in this. I'm going to stick on it. It doesn't mean that every trade works, even that I take. But way more trades I take are positive than, than fail. And that's really the niche that I have and what you have to find for yourself if you're going to do this. Because... Trading is so easy when you know what to do. And again, it's not that it's not that taking a loss is easy, but you let it roll off your back because you know that the next six trades you're going to take, for example, are going to be winners. And so then that it allows some big winners too. And that allows you then to keep going, okay, and actually enjoy what you do. And I really do enjoy reading charts. And more than that, I enjoy predicting uh, things that are going to happen that seem impossible, like I predicted this market to fall like this. And so, you know, it's one of these things where the expertise, the skill set, it's the skill set that you need as a trader. And many people are focused and think they have certain skill sets, but the things that they're focused on that they're reading every day based on their making their trading decisions to trade off of are not things that are going to make them money because they're not the right things, if that makes any sense. So anyways, this was a short we did actually just the other day. We shorted the market even on the gap down on Monday. So let me just go over this here. This is the SPY. So here we were. We rallied up, rallied up, rallied up, gapped up, made new highs. This was the beginning of the month. Gap down, fell. Fell, 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 fell. And again, I called puts on a Thursday morning in here, dropped Friday into the Monday, okay? Then on Monday, we did a day trade. So here's the spy. What happened here? This is Friday. Market closed here, gapped down. Boom. Here in the tail is the sell-off where we got a nice trade. 
Entry was 325.85, stop was 327.30. This is a Dane trade, an equity trade, which you would need a margin account to trade off of at a retail broker, or you could trade at a prop broker. Again, you need margin. So this is not an option, this is a day trade, but I will be going over some options. Shares was 2,500, this is an advanced risk. 36.25, you can take less. You can take 100 shares of this if you want. It was a beautiful trade. Exit was 322.10, boom, out. And this was not the low, it actually broke a little bit more but it was a nice exit and it was a solid short. And again, this is more than a $3 move. It was almost four bucks. Profit was $9,375. So even if you took 500 shares of this, it was just a huge, huge call. And so again, the analysis that I do is to see that a set, that, that this market, that this stock, we did the market here, this is a buy, um, would go to take the entry short and then let it drop, okay? Same thing here with the, with the sell-off here from Thursday into Monday, okay? Now, I was talking here about institutional money earlier. What do I mean? Here's a chart of Google. Again, this is a very, I call it a high flyer. Google can have big moves, very, very large moves. Google has been getting bought. You have institutional money that was buying Google here. How do you think the stock went from here? This is uh, mid-August. Stock was around 1525, had a monster move up, more than $200 move very, very quickly in about a two week period. How do you think it got all the way up here? It got bought, it got bought, okay? So again, this is institutional money moving the stock higher here, even on this particular day here on the second, and then you have profit taking in here. So all of this selling here is profit taking for people that went long it, and people that have been long it for a while actually. So again, you're looking for who is in charge? The bulls or the bears? Now, this is another one here that we ended up doing Thursday the 10th. Let me just find this that date that was last week. No, that was two weeks ago. The 1500s we did here. Oops, here, here's the 10th. So we shorted, we did a put in Google here on this day. No, here's the day. Oh, where the heck is it? No, I did have the right day here. Here, this is the 10th. We did the 1500s. Dropped here, dropped here, fell, broke, okay? That was a nice trade. So sometimes I'll call things through the strike, sometimes I'll call it into the strike. Um, anyways, I have a Gap Options newsletter which gives you trade ideas where the newsletters come right to your email. This was at late in the day on the 10th. I saw that it was gonna continue and gap down the following day. This was at 3.21 in the afternoon. This is not cheap to trade, okay, but definitely worthwhile. Uh, four contracts of this, $18 a piece, um, sold here at 56, this is a nice move. Okay, so the profit was 15,200, a 211% return on in investment. So what if you bought one? You could have paid $1,800 for one and you get the sell off. So this was a nice drop. Again, the difference between options and equity trading is you do not need margin for this. So like, for example, to take one contract of Google here, you would have needed only $1,800 in your account. And the other thing is when you do options, you don't need a margin account. If you want to be in, out, in, out, in, out, you have to set up a margin account with your broker for that. But in reference to opening a, an options account, the minimum starter is usually $2,000. Okay. So a nice drop in Google. <coughs> and again, any questions here, let me know. Here was the Tesla I was talking about. Here was this, and this I clipped earlier today, this dropped even more. Beautiful chart in this. We, we've been doing many different trades in this. Some of them were calls, some of them were punts. Again, how would this stock go like it did? And this is this is not really make sense here with the price points because the stock split. So this number over here, the price was different in these bars previously back in August, but just to show you, you see here, this closed here, gapped up, rallied, continued from this area to here. The stock almost basically went straight up. And I think people got a little bit crazy in here going long before the stock split, which is not a strategy. People went long before the news out on this battery thing this week. That was not a strategy either. Again, what I do is based on technical analysis and it's technical analysis in the gap. So people are losing heavily today that went long into that battery day. And you know, people love this stock, I get it, I totally get it, the stock is in an uptrend, that's true. But you have to have the right placement of what's happening because if you're trading momentum, which is the only way, quite frankly, I think you can make money as one individual in the market, 
um, unless you have millions and millions and millions of dollars to put at work to you for you to train, then you've got to get momentum. You've got to get big moves and you have to pinpoint it at the right time to get that flush. Um, and again, whether it's a rally or whether it's a drop, you would, this would be a terrible long here today, you know? In fact, I was talking about this somewhere. I said this on a spot I had on a marriage trade two days ago. If you knew you could buy something at, you know, if, if, if you knew you could buy something for $100, why would you pay $150? If you knew for sure you're going to be able to get it for $100, well, you wouldn't. You just wait. You wait for it to be at $100 or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyways, this was one back from earlier in the month, September 3rd. I called puts the 418 puts in this now this is an expensive stock to trade they cost 29 bucks for one and three is an 8700 dollars advance risk sold at 45 it's a nice trade 55 percent return on investment let's go and i'll show you the date september 3rd 418s here's the third here's the drop drop boom so anyways again nice move in tesla the downside here and then we're getting it here today as well and actually, you could be out of this today or you could still be in it because I called the puts for the this Friday. So, you know, whenever you're doing anything, you have to have a reason for doing it. And I think when people just assume that something's going to happen based on news, I mean, that's just ridiculous to me. That's like gambling. I mean, you almost could have predicted that it was going to go in the opposite direction that everyone was doing it, quite frankly, because so many people were telling me and there's so much stuff in the news that I'm like, why are people doing this? This makes no sense. Like, there's no reason to assume it's going to have X, Y, Z move for, for, for the news that you don't know anything about or the stock split, really. So anyways, here's the Amazon. This is another one here. I've been looking at that, this just to kind of see where the pull is going to be. Because again, if Amazon falls hard, show will go the market. Uh, this is a big market mover. Huge. Okay. And I was watching this actually last week, which was helping me pinpoint exactly where the overall market would go as well. This had a big sell-off last week. We got it a couple of times. It's having a sell-off today. I know it had a rally yesterday. And you may look at that and say, gosh, there was a big rally yesterday or whatever. Again, while theoretically you could have gone long yesterday as a day trade, it really wasn't a great entry of what was going to happen here because the momentum really is pushing this into the selling position right now and this is selling off as well today but we did this back here last friday and then got it down on the gap down on monday morning or you could have got out of it friday so again set this newsletter out friday morning the 3100 puts let's take a look at it so that was oops the 10th i know that was two weeks ago gosh it feels like every day just runs together living in new york anymore this was the 10th so I call this here, call the 3,100 puts, boom, drop, okay? Um, something just weird happened there with the chat. Is you were trying to write a question or something there, Sherry? The chat just kind of jumped up. If you did Yes, okay. you got a question from Jose asking, will you discuss in detail your reasoning in any one of these trades? Uh, the reasoning would take me 16 hours. That's the whole, that's the class that I do. The class that I do is a two day weekend class at 16 hours. So it would take me way too long. I have a limited amount of time to talk today. And that's the meat and potatoes of what I do. And the process also that I go through in the morning, which doesn't take 16 hours. But when I go through my process in the morning, I rate the gap in the morning using a 26 point rating criteria. We would not even have time to go over that today. But that is- Okay, so he'll need to know how to get in touch with you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can get in touch with me later. And sh you know, Sherry cuts me off at a certain time. So <laughs> we gotta, where I'm trying to give you a basic overall general analysis here of gaps. That's the purpose of today, showing you some trades that we did, showing you how they worked. And then if you're interested, you can email me for a trial to the trading room. Well, I'll call the trades live if you want to come into the trading room. You're welcome to email me to get in the room this week, okay? You can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to come in the room tomorrow. We'll see what we get. Um, and it's probably going to be a big day because of the fact that, again, we have the unemployment claims coming out tomorrow morning. That, I believe, has a, a, a big reaction uh tomorrow in the gap so um so good question there anyways this was the 3100 puts and the, and the overall reasoning is this gap down i mean just to be quick about it this gap down i rated the gap the gap rated per my system so we shorted it 
And it's that simple. You got to learn the you got to learn the system, and that's what takes the whole weekend, 16 hours. But as far as doing it, once you learn the system, you rate it. It rates per the system. Then you take it in the direction of the gap. So because Amazon here gapped down, we did it. We shorted it. It was a great trade. This was a really nice trade. Again, this is very expensive. So if you're somebody that, that has a smaller account, maybe you can't do the Amazons. Or you know what? Maybe you do it farther away. Because when you do options, you could have done the 3,000s and you still would have been profitable. So again, you can do something farther away. Um, but anyways, when you're trading, again, you have to make good choices. And I think this is what people people jump around too much. Yeah, good choices means a good trade selection, having a plan and having a good system and quality entries. And more, most importantly, also don't over trade. Um, every, all of us have a bad day now and then where we feel like we did too many trades. And it usually happens, like for me, if I over trade, I always go back and look, it's because I started out the day with a loss. When I have the biggest and best days I ever had, guess what, it's usually one trade and done. Now we did short the market this week on, on Monday. We did the Qs, we did the SPY, we did the diamonds as a day trades. We did three things at once because I knew the market would roll over, but that's, that's unusual. It's unusual to have a day where the market will power trend down. We're kind of getting that today though, quite frankly. Um, so, I mean, when you're looking to trade, I think you say, you get up in the morning and you say, this is my goal for the day. And once you have your goal done, you take it, you book it, you get out. If there is a day where there isn't anything that meets your criteria or nothing to do, then guess what? You don't trade. I mean, you have to be disciplined in what you're doing because ultimately this idea of doing it is to make money. It's really not the thought process of necessarily just doing something for the sake of doing it. Although trading is fun and pressing the buttons are fun, making money is more fun. And you don't want to lose on a day unnecessarily if there isn't anything to do. And I suspect that many traders are losing today. So, I mean, we're, we got it. We, we got it, but I mean, this is not an easy read here of this market, and I give myself all the credit in the world for reading it right. In fact, Sherry was talking about television. I emailed two weeks ago, last Monday on the 14th, um, my talking points to Fox News where I thought the market was going. I was 100% I was correct. This is 12 and a half years of doing this uh, and doing nothing else. I have an, a very advanced skill set, and that is the benefit of coming and learning from me. One, if you can trade in the live trading room with me every morning, you're getting the calls live, and two, taking the class, you learn what I know, but you still have to do it yourself. Trading is an independent activity. It is not a group activity. Um, it is something that you have to do, and if you're an independent person, if you're entrepreneurial and you wanna do it, that's great. I help people, I mentor them, I'm here for the support and the knowledge, but ultimately it is up to you to do it. You're the one that presses the button. You're the one that has to take this seriously. And you're the one that would be investing in my class if in fact you wanted to come and learn from me. So it has to be something that you take seriously. Now, as far as goal setting and making money and where you wanna be per week, per day, per month, I say chunk it out and look at it as share quantity size. So again, in the trading room, I'll call the entry and the stop. And then we're to exit. But like, for example, if I say 50 by 75, that would be 75 cents. First number is the entry, second one's a stop. And so you look at the share quantity, 50 cents if you take 1,000 shares. Again, you can make 50 cents, that's 500 bucks, that's profit. I'm usually looking for one turnover. Again, some days we get bigger trades, but like that Tesla trade, that's a trade. 50% in an option, that's money. One over on a day trade, that's profit. You risk 1,500 in day trade, you make 1,500, you're out, okay? So stop losses is something I use, this is important. Money management is you have to risk the same amount in every trade and you have to manage them the same. So for the day trades, again, we're getting them one to one, but for options, I really just let everything ride. So the trade either wins or it loses with me for the options. So you can be tighter if you want to kill them when they're down 50%, but I really don't suggest that to people, just knowing myself and how I've been calling the trades. Now let's take a look here at another short. This was on the 16th. This was Apple. Entry was 114.99. Shares was 2200. Risk was 26.62. Exit was 113. Again, $2 move out. Profit 43.78. Again, this is on a gap down. It is so, so important to get the right direction with the momentum. Apple is falling today. In fact, if someone can quickly, quickly look and tell me where's Apple at right now, 
because I'm doing this and I'm talking. Can anybody quick tell me what's the price of Apple right now as, I'm, as we're talking here? Because Apple was falling today and that was the other thing that I saw that was gonna drag, drag on the market even today as well. Someone can write it in the room. Anyway, CCL, we did this on the 15th. Nice bar in here. Again, what's the reason I did this trade? Because I got up in the morning and CCL gap down. Closed here at 18, boom. Opened in the morning around 1720-ish. Open dropped. I rated the gap in the pre-market. It rated to short that it would continue selling off on the gap down. And actually, we had an early exit on this. I thought it was a good exit on this, but it ended up continuing. Um, entering this was 1685. Stop was 1715. 8,000 shares, 2,400 risk. We exited this at 1657, which is hilarious because it actually went down, broke 16, went to the dream target. I mean, that was a great trade. But it, this was, again, this is your goal for the day, you're out. But if you held this all the way down, you could have made 60 more cents on this plus. I mean, look at that, what it did. But we got out of this right in here, snug as a bug, on the 20 period moving average. But it kept going, kept going, fell all the way down. Anyways, I think it's important to focus on quality. And that is what I'm trying to show you also in all of these trades. Quality, 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 not quantity. Um, and, and it's, oh, here, I clipped this from Apple here this morning. Where is Apple? Is that, no one brought it in the room? No one knows and no one cares. We also did a put in Apple. This was back on Thursday, the 10th. We did a bunch of puts that day. Called the 115s. Boy, this was cheap for Apple even to get this here. Three bucks for one contract you could have paid. Sold at 640, 113% return on investment. So this is Thursday, the 10th. Again, I'm gonna go back. It dropped, boom, fell, fell, fell. Nice trade, nice sell off. And again, we're continuing that into the move today. And people, you know, I just, and I know that people went long, even Apple yesterday. Apple did get up yesterday and people love to go long Apple. Um, but you know, really we've been, we've been shorting Apple and the trades have been working. And then here is the QQQs. Again, here is the sell off here today. What happened today? We closed here, gap down, open, fell. And we did the same day. We did the 277 puts in the queues. Cost was 520, a little expensive, but we did it out to the 18th. Again, you don't have to hold something to the whole next week. You can, you can do it and get out of it when you get the momentum. Sold at 11.25, beautiful trade. Once 116% return on investment. So if you were 1,700, you made 9,075. So again, same day here on this day here, the 10th, boom, boom, drop. See how it works? And again, what's really funny is you could have held this even longer because actually look what this did actually then that very last day. Not that I suggest that, I don't really suggest that, but this, like from the day that I called this up here, which is the day I called it, I called the 277 strike. This was one and this is rare. And Apple was like this too. You could have actually held this the very last day of expiration and still made money in this trade. That's so rare. And I don't suggest people to doing it. But again, you see how well I'm reading this here, where we're going, where we're headed. Like I can see where we're going in the future. And how can I see that? It's based on technical analysis and gaps. That is what I do. Um, and here's the spy today. I'll have to look at where we are with this later too. This was the same day too. We called the 338 puts. Did them five bucks, which is normal for the market for out for two weeks basically. 95% return on investment. Got the drop in this too. Again, this was on that particular day here. Sell off, boom, drop. Again, we did the 338s. Fell through it hard. Got the move. Again, when you're doing a put, when you're doing a put, you're doing a short basically, and you could have done equity trades in the market here as well. So anyways, you know, my whole point here is that you, you, when you trade, you need to make more money on your winning trades than your losing trades. And, and you also have to have way more winning trades, okay, than losing trades. So that means you have to be right, and you have to be right a lot, quite frankly. And if you're not, then guess what? You're, you're gonna not get anywhere. And I think a lot of people, when they're trading, they, they just push the envelope too much and then they lose. And then that's one of the reasons why people jump around so much because they have such big losses. They're desperate, desperate for anything at all to somehow do one big trade that's going to get all their money back from all the money they've ever lost in the last umpteen years of trading. It doesn't work like that. It has to be a process. And like I said earlier, it has to be based on a skill set. And so, you know, for me, 
I use stops in my day trades. The amount that I risk is the stop and the option. If it loses, it loses. And you have to think about this in a very, very specified, focused way. I'm trying to get the move fast. I'm trying to get the momentum. And really, that's what I'm looking for. Now, here was one more here, Facebook. Actually, I should take a look at this here later today. Facebook, we did the puts on Monday, September 14th. They did the 265s uh, that expired last Friday. Nice rollover in this, dropped. Cost of these, again, 375, 20 contracts for 7,500, sold at 1275, $18,000, which is a 240% return on investment. These trains even don't take that long. I'm doing everything out within the same week or the next week. Depends on the timing of when exactly how many more days I have left where I see it's gonna go. So this was on the 14th, and I'm gonna go back and show you this here. This was here, and then we dropped, okay? And then we fell, and then we dropped. And again, beautiful move dropped into itself like a cup, okay? This is Facebook, nice sell-off that fell on down. And here then I'm showing you the beginner risk. So if you want to take two contracts, you could have risked $750 and made 1800 bucks. That's a good trade for $750 risk. So again, if you have a $2,000 small beginner account you could have basically doubled it with a $750 risk in this one trade. And some of the days, to be honest with you, I'm calling many, many trades. So, you know, it's one of these things. If I see the market is going to go a certain direction, we will do a bunch of trades. And it's up to you if you want to do them all, if you want to do one or two. You know, it depends how much you want to have on. So what does it take to do this? And what do you need to do? You need, number one, a system to trade. I have that. I said it's a golden gap. You learned that in the class. I'm looking for stocks that gap in the morning that have big moves and often a clear directional bias that gives you an edge. What I have is an edge because it tells me in the pre-market or the post-market where it's going to go. That has helped me read this overall market. I read the gaps in the market too, even though I'm not necessarily playing them every day. Sometimes the moves for the day trades happen very quick. Sometimes for the options, they happen quick. Sometimes they take 24 to 48 hours, okay? But gaps are a very specialized strategy that I think you've got to really kind of say, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to take all the information that I know in the past that maybe hasn't been working for me. I'm going to start fresh. And I think now's the time to do that. A lot of people are working from home. They have the time to learn. They have the time to take a class and they have the time to trade from home. So, um, you know, if that's if this is something that you're thinking about doing, you definitely can reach out to me. You definitely can come and do the trial, but you would learn the system in the class. It is the rating system. It is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist to read what's going to happen so you can take the trade into the open when it sets up. The checklist tells you what to trade and when. And it's a very, very powerful system. And gaps are powerful. Uh, gaps are traded, again, with a lot of money and momentum. And that's how you get the big moves. And as I was saying before, volatility is actually a good thing if you know what to do. So if you're thinking about doing this, what are you going to learn? How, what, and when? What stocks to trade? When to trade them? And then how to figure out which ones to trade, okay? I'm looking for high probability. Everything with the market is about probabilities. Is it high probability or low probability? Okay, is there a high probability the market's going to make brand new all-time highs before the election? No, that's low probability is what I would say. Do you understand? So you have to trade based on probabilities, high and low. And when I'm looking at 26 points, it's a lot of things. But by golly, if I could think of 126, I'd do it. And then maybe I'd never lose because it's about the detail and the very specific parts of it, which is one of the reasons why I could never go over that today. Detail is important. If, if I'm putting on seven, $8,000 in a train, you better believe that I'm, I'm detailed about what I'm doing. And for you yourself, if you're putting on $1,000 of your own money, you better have the detail. You better know what you're doing and why. And that's why I can't understand why sometimes people just take these trades for no reason at all, like I was talking about with Tesla and Apple uh, into the stock splits. But you know, if you want to learn what I do, if you want to find out more information, you can email me, you can call me. The next class is October 3rd and 4th. Again, it's called the Golden Gap Course. And it's definitely realistic for you to make good money trading. I have some traders that are up for the year of several hundred thousand dollars. I mean, so this has just been a banner year for a lot of people with me. One, I've never traded more because of the pandemic. I'm home more to see things during the day. And two, it's been a volatile year. But you can do this. 
For me, it's the analysis. I'm a very brain-oriented person. And for those of you that are here, if you've known me or watched other webinars, you're aware of that. I'm a very independent person. I think if you have this kind of skill set and this desire to work for yourself, you absolutely can do it. But you have to have the right guidance and you have to have the right strategy and you have to want to do it. My class is $7,000. So for some people, uh, that's, that's fine. For some people, they consider that expensive. It is well worth the money, every single penny. Every single person that takes my class comes away with it, blown away by the information that they get out of the class. So you're paying me for my time and the information and to learn a system that you can use pretty much for the rest of your life. You can use it for swing trades, options, or day trades. The class is online and I'm doing a fall special here through Sunday. If you wanna sign up, you get the trading room and options that are free to the end of the year and then you would get all my trades between now and New Year's Eve 2020. So if you're interested, call me, email me. If you want a trial, you can reach out to me too. Sorry I was late today. Fantastic. Thank you. We do have a couple of questions for you. Sure. And I think we, we, as long as we only keep it down to a couple of minutes, we should be good. And maybe this can't be answered in a couple of minutes. One person said, uh, how do you use stop losses with options based on the underlying or the option price? Are you doing this with spreads? No, I'm just buying calls or buying puts like what you saw in those newsletter clips. I just buy calls and buy puts, that's it. I either believe the stock's lower or higher. I don't do spreads and also what is whatever I risk. So if something costs a buck, that's it. Either the trade works or it goes bust. I don't kill it in the middle, but if you want to, you can. If you want to, you can. And we're gonna look here at Apple. I called the 110 puts in Apple today. I called the 110 puts in Apple today. This stock is at 109. This was a great trade and no one wanted to give me the price of it. It's down a dollar. This is a good trade. You could have done this trade today when I called it this morning and out of it today with money. Or you could be a still be in it because I think we're lower tomorrow. This was a great trade. Yep. Awesome. And then the other question that I have for you is what is the average ROI for your trade system? Do you for have the that? day trades, for the day trades, I would say about 80% to 100%. For the options, wow. for the options, some of them have I would say 100% and I'm going to be conservative there because some of them have been blown away. We did trades in Tesla a couple of different times this year where the, where the ROI was like a thousand percent. So it's so difficult to say what is an average because there are trades that I lose in full completely. But I, I will tell you, I don't get out of something if it's like 10%. So I'm either all in or all out. So I'm going to say a hundred percent one turnover. All right. Well, I put your email address down there for everybody to respond to. And by the way, everyone, you'll probably be getting an email from Melissa, just giving you this offer one more time. So um, I appreciate your time today, Melissa, and I'm looking forward to having you back in December or January. So um, if you guys have more questions for her, you need to email her at Melissa at the stock right? Yes. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye. bye.